Sorry. <laughs> hey loves welcome back welcome back welcome back to another episode of pillow talk with t and tay i'm t <laughs> and i'm tay thank you guys so much for tuning in today for our episode of pillow talk with t and tay it's like i have i was like making sure you knew i that. never know when you're gonna stop talking <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't talk that much. I, I know I do. You, you can you don't put pause in it, so we don't mm-hmm. never know. That's what we're doing today. Yeah, like hey, you know, it so is. Again. It is good to see you guys. Well, it's good to be here and to talk with you guys and share our insight on different topics and things that we've dealt with, faced, or have um, experienced throughout our lifetime. So we again thank you guys for joining us and for. Um, Continuously tuning in. So, today's topic um, is a little bit of a challenging one for me. Um, for for anybody, honestly, truth be told, it's a challenging one. Um, but it's necessary to talk about because not a lot of people know how to handle and deal with it. Um, so, if we can share our experience with it, then maybe it can be helpful. Or the signs of it. Yeah, or the signs of it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, I thought you were going to be No, here. I just wanted okay. to make sure. Yeah, definitely. The signs. Mm-hmm. So today's topic is dealing with loved ones who have mental issues. Um, whether it's someone who's born with those issues or someone who throughout life transitioned to those issues. Um, I guess I'll go first and discuss mine. Because mine wasn't... Um, apparent until later on in life that I started to pay attention to and recognize the signs of their of them having those mental issues and then one went from being a normal person not to say someone with mental issues is not normal but went from being someone who did not have mental issues I'll say it that way someone who did not have mental issues to someone who now deals with um issues that you know, causes them difficulties in life because they're um, they're not they they're not stabilized anymore. Um, so first, I'll go with the first one where um, I saw a loved one who went from being a laughing, joking, playful person to now um, maybe running up and down the street thinking everyone wanted to take his life or um, feeling like you know, the world is after them and things of that nature. That is heartbreaking to see and to watch. Um, and it's challenging to deal with when you are used to a person being a certain way. It's an adjustment period. It is an adjustment period because you're you're not used to this new person that they are or that they become because of um, if it's a health thing, hereditary, or if it may have been... Um, a drug addiction or something like that that may have caused it, whatever it may have been that triggered this shift in the chemical imbalance that they're now having. Um, And to watch someone go from being that person you once knew for 18, 19 years to now for the next 18, 19 years of their life, or 20 plus years of your life that you've known them, they are this new person. So the initial part of it is challenging, but... Because you know that person and you love that person, I definitely say don't give up on them. Um, You will have to find a new way to um, have a relationship with that person. You have to be mindful that they're not the same as who they used to be. Um, They, you have to learn to be able to have a conversation with them. They're not aliens. They're just dealing with issues that you have never had to deal with and you don't completely understand. But as a person who loves that person, you want to learn how to understand them and what they're going through. So that way you can be able to have meaningful conversations with them and be able to let them know that they're still loved. Um, It can be hard to watch the process, but try not to run away from it and turn your back on them. Because that's the last thing they need is to go through the changes that they're going through and then also lose their loved ones along the way. Now, if it becomes a dangerous situation or something that may be um, maybe harmful for your life or something like that, they, of course, make the best judgment on how you handle the relationship. 
but for your loved ones, you tried your best to be there as, as best you can without losing yourself in the process. Um, that I think that's one of the bigger ones that I've dealt with is almost losing myself trying to help that help them. And this is now on to another instance. So where the person was dealing with mental issues all of their life, but because I was young, I didn't really see it. I didn't recognize it. And then as I got older, I started to see the, the, the signs and the characteristics of someone who has certain traits and certain um, misfires and, and, and mis mental issues and concerns. So again, instead of me running and dismissing them, it was more so I can love them. I can still love them, but I have to do it in a way to where I also consider myself in this. And for a long time, I didn't. I just gave all of me trying to help, trying to change, trying to do. Knowing I wasn't licensed, educated, or um, able to change them or to even help them. But all I wanted to do is try to make them better. And I couldn't do it all in my own strength. So I just did what I could. Um, to be there, and I, I did almost lose myself in the process of it, but I had to come to the realization that, no, I've got to still take care of me, too, um, along with still trying to be there for them. Mm -hmm. I'll pause there, and because, you know, y'all get talking, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'll pause there. But what are your thoughts on how to, or, or just dealing with loved ones who have mental issues? What are your thoughts on that? No, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. I'm just, yeah. You know. You know, it's a, it's a challenging thing. Um, I'm trying to think. My uh, situation was one of those that just was caught off guard, and then I, when I, when I did recognize some things, it was a little too late. Mm -hmm. uh, that was beyond correction. Yeah. And they were further, uh, not only dealing with that, they were dealing with other issues and in, in, uh, multiplied with other issues. Mm -hmm. It was just too late, and there was nothing uh, I could do. But uh, you just want to be paying attention when the person changes, yeah. and when they start making changes and and are different from what they used to be, there may be uh, possibly a sign of a uh, mental illness there. Yeah. Uh, and some things can be corrected through medicine. Some things can be corrected through uh, therapy. therapy. Some things can be even uh, what they call it. Um, you can get a uh, hypn hypnotosis, hypnotic mm -hmm. therapy even. I've heard of that even. And uh, it's just amazing the different things that are out there. But you definitely want to pay attention to the signs. And uh, no matter how close that loved one is or how close that person is, recognize the signs and, and uh, try to address it as soon as possible rather than the latter. Yeah. I, I would definitely say, too, like, don't beat yourself up if they're not wanting to get the help that you're offering yeah. or that you're wanting to get for them. Because a lot of times some people are so far mm -hmm. gone, yeah. they're going to push back from it and, mm -hmm. and feel like, oh, I'm fine. I don't need anything. I'm fine. I don't need help. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And as long as you've done your part to at least try to help them and, you know, suggest and even try to take them and, you know, bring people in to help them, you're doing what you can to help them and they're still resisting and pushing against it don't feel bad about their outcome yes you want the best for them but if they're not willing to accept it there's not a lot you can do and you have to find a place to where well not have to but you should be able to find a place or you should find a place where you're you can be okay with that um because otherwise you're gonna like i said otherwise you're gonna lose yourself trying to make it happen for them because when they're in that headspace a lot of them a lot of people don't want help or they tell you that they're okay or they get the help and they feel, or they may feel like the help's not, this it's not going to help them right. um, without even giving it a try. And you run into those issues and those concerns with your loved ones. And like I said, all you want to do is help. You just want to make them better, make them be like they used to be and um, feel better and, you know, not hurt so much. And, and it's like, but it's beyond your control. And you've got to have that realistic talk with yourself to know what you can and can't do for them. Yeah. And it's you, you'll have to get to a point where you, you'll be okay with it. And it's a time thing. It's not an overnight, oh, I'm okay. They'll be all right. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a process to get through this because 
you love that person so much and you just want nothing but the best for them, but they don't want it. And they don't know how to find it. They don't know how to get it. They don't know what to do to make it any better. So definitely just do what you can that's within your own strength. And, you know, allow the experts to come in and help as best they can. So you don't, again, lose yourself in the process of trying to care for or dealing with a, a loved one who has a mental illness. So, anything else on that? No. No? Not, okay. at, this, not at this moment. Not at this time. Yeah. It, it's a difficult mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very difficult, um, especially when you don't know what signs to look for. Um, and when you think you're thinking a person is just, oh, they just drink a lot and that's all it is versus it could be something that's dealing, they're dealing with mentally that's causing them to drink a lot or that person does these drugs and that's just all that they're, they're a drug addict, but it could be something wrong that's making them do what they're doing. So, um, pay, I guess they pay attention to your signs of your loved ones when they're around you and you know, understanding how you can and can't help them and support them and where you can. Um, but just don't beat yourself up for the outcomes that come from some of the situations because some things aren't preventable. Um, but it's, it's okay. We get through it. Um, and we do the best we can to love on those the best way we can. All right. That's it. That's it. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Um, another episode of Pillow Talk with TNTA. Yes, this was a challenging one for us, um, but I know someone out there needed to hear um, just some words of encouragement yeah. that it's going to be okay yeah. and that you can get through it yeah. and that that person that you once loved is still in there. Um, it's just maybe beyond what you can do to help them. Yeah. Um, so, but don't, don't write them off. Yeah, uh, don't write them off. Stay with them as, as much as you can. You know, take your breaks as much as you need to, but don't write them off. Yeah. Um, they can't help everything that's occurred. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Pillow Talk with TNT. We'll see you guys again next month, which yeah. is next week, yeah. uh, with another episode of Pillow Talk with TNT. Yeah. yeah. We thank you and continue to stay safe. That's what I was saying. I want to make sure you told y'all to be safe. Yeah. All right. I guess. See you. Hmm. This is the one you're going to be taking on. Huh? This is the one you're going to be starting out with. Or okay. I can start. I'm going to start out. I can start out with this. And then you're going to bring it in. No, it's not. Babe, you had one that was going to go in your eye. It's okay. No, it wasn't. It was going to hurt. Know, you're going to find stuff, man. You're going to keep nitpicking. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I'm going to be sitting here like Michael Jackson. What? What? Because my wife picked at me so much. Seriously? Like, that ain't even the same no more. Really? It disappeared before. <laughs> oh my goodness. You are so crazy. I'm not doing that on there because you're crazy. You can't say that about Michael. You got Michael to get uh, you. Yeah, no. I love him too. <laughs> you can't say that. I'm not going to pick at you to change you. Yeah, you might. I'm not. You're going to still be the same. It's just uh, certain things you, I was like, I saw that on your eyelash, so I wanted to keep it. I won't look any further. But then there's this, no. I'm just playing. Yeah, I know. This one, no, no. I just wanted to make sure. Quit it. I need you to keep But forgive me for caring about how you look and making sure you ain't got nothing all over you. Okay, I'm sorry, I went far. Yeah, you went way <laughs> too left. I'll bring you back sooner. Um.